Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our physiology playlist. Let's talk about a quick review of hematology and immunology. Blood physiology, immunophysiology, let's go. We'll talk about red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, the complement cascade, and hypersensitivity reactions. The first 25 videos in this playlist were talking about cell physiology. Then we had a series about the autonomic nervous system and then nerve physiology, then muscle physiology. And we are video number 70 today, the review of blood and immunity. You can download all of these notes at medicosisperfectionatus.com. Your blood is made of plasma and cells. The plasma is mostly made of water. The plasma is one fourth of the extracellular fluid, which is one third of your total body water, which is 60% of your body weight. Plasma has water, inorganic substances, organic substances, and gases. Inorganic substances are the cations and anions. Organic substances are the plasma proteins, plasma lipids, lipoproteins, which are lipids and proteins together, miscellaneous stuff. The gases are oxygen and carbon dioxide. Let's talk about the plasma proteins. They are albumin and globulin mostly, but also you have fibrinogen, prothrombin, and others. Who makes plasma proteins? The liver. Albumin is the most numerous. Globulin is the biggest. Globular proteins. We have alpha-1 globulin, alpha-2 globulin, beta globulin, and gamma globulin. This is the story of the plasma protein electrophoresis. These are your coagulation factors. They are plasma proteins made in the liver, except calcium. Albumin to globulin ratio. This is normal. This is pathology. Cirrhosis and nephrotic syndrome not only lower your AG ratio, they also cause hypoproteinemia, which will cause edema, pitting, dependent, transudate edema caused by low oncotic pressure. What are the functions of plasma proteins? A, B, C, D, osmosis and transport. We're done with the plasma. Let's review blood cells. We're going very quickly. If you want more details, check my previous videos. These are your blood cells. You have red blood cells, you have platelets, and white blood cells. The white blood cells are either granulocytes or non-granulocytes. Leukocytes, let's go. This is your army, this is your military. They are nucleated cells, they are your immune system. Leukocytes make a part of the Buffy coat, which is less than 1% of your total blood. Granulocytes versus non-granulocytes. Normal total leukocytic count is between 4,000 and 11,000. Let's just say 10,000. 60% of the 10,000 should be neutrophils. 30% lymphocyte. 3 to 7, monocyte. 1 to 3, eosinophils. 0 to 1, basophils. Don't forget that basophils are very high in cases of CML, chronic myelogenous leukemia. These are the functions of the white blood cells. Different nomenclature based on different locations. White blood cells love inflammation. What are the cardinal signs of acute inflammation? Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Ruber, color, tumor, dollar, functulase. Acute inflammation, neutrophils. Chronic inflammation, lymphocytes. What's the outcome? Resolution, progression, or abscess formation. Chronic inflammation, what's the outcome? Scar formation, disability, amyloidosis. What do white blood cells and platelets have in common? They are attracted to glue. Who made the glue? Endothelial cells. Be specific, the vipal palati bodies of the endothelial cells. And this glue is going to attract neutrophils and platelets, but different kind of glue for each. If you want to attract neutrophils, your glue is called P-selectin. If you want to attract platelets, your glue is called von Willebrand factor. Von Willebrand factor come from the endothelial cells. It also comes from platelets. Form follows function. In acute inflammation, what do you want? I want the neutrophils to leave. Oh, so you want to vasodilate to make it easier for them to leave. Okay, but in hemostasis, what do you want? I want the blood not to leave. So you better vasoconstrict. Here is acute inflammation. Here is primary hemostasis. How do we attract the neutrophils to the outside world? Well, you need some neutrophil chemotactic factors such as these. Why do you want them to leave the blood and go to the tissue? Because the bacteria is in the tissue. More inflammatory mediators, you need to memorize these. 
Acute inflammation starts with vasodilation. And then neutrophil, margination, diapedesis, amyloid movement, chemotaxis, opsonization, phagocytosis of the stupid bacteria. Do you know why we have redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function? Mostly because of the vasodilation and the mediators. It's platelets time. Normal platelet count is between 150,000 to 400,000 per microliter. Platelets also belong to the Buffy coat. As you see, the red blood cells are way more numerous than white blood cells or platelets. It's not even close. Platelets are the thrombocytes because they make a thrombus. Unlike white blood cells, platelets do not have a nucleus. They cannot divide. Platelets are pieces of the megakaryocytes after it ruptured. Pew! giving you thousands of tiny platelets. You can find your blood cells in the blood or hiding in the spleen. That's why if I have splenomegaly, it's very likely that my platelet count will decrease. But if the platelet count is so low, please do not blame the spleen. There is something else going on. Who stimulates platelet production? TPO and interleukin-6, which increases TPO. The lifespan of the platelet in the blood is 8 to 12 days, but for the red blood cell, it's about 90 days, 3 months. Platelets are biconvex, but red blood cells are biconcave. The structure of the platelet, plasma membrane and cytoplasm. Don't forget that the cytoplasm has granules. What kind of granules? We have alpha granules and delta granules. When I injure myself, I vasoconstrict, then comes the platelet to make the platelet plug. This is called primary hemostasis. This is followed by coagulation factors coming to make the coagulation cascade. This is secondary hemostasis. You end up with fibrin meshwork trapping the red blood cells and this is how you stop bleeding and then the clot contracts releasing serum and then fibrolysis to destroy the clot and restore the normal function and the normal blood flow after injury. These are the steps of stopping the bleeding. Number one is vasoconstriction. It's a myogenic response. Here is primary hemostasis or platelet plug formation, adhesion, activation, aggregation of platelets. Then comes secondary hemostasis, which is the coagulation cascade, thanks to the coagulation factors, which are plasma proteins made in the liver. Are they albumin or globulin? They are globulins, particularly beta globulins. I made the clot, I stopped the bleeding. Now what? Fibrinolysis, baby, it's time to break down this clot and restore the function. How do I break down the clot? Plasmin. Where does it come from? Plasminogen. How can I convert plasminogen to plasmin? TPA, tissue plasminogen activator. So here is coagulation in a nutshell. Vasoconstriction, primary hemostasis, secondary hemostasis, and then fibrinolysis. We're done with white blood cells, we're done with platelets, let's talk about the doozy red blood cells. Circular, biconcave, non-nucleated. Circular, biconcave, non-nucleated. Red blood cell count is higher than usual in neonates, athletes, and highlanders if you live on top of mountains. Who makes them? The bone marrow. Who breaks them? The spleen, specifically the splenic macrophages. When you break down the red blood cells, they give you hemoglobin. Hemoglobin has heme and globin. Heme has iron and protoporphyrin. Protoporphyrin will become biliverdin. That's why your bile is green. Verd means green. And then you reduce it into bilirubin, which is carried on albumin. Carried to where? To the liver. Why? Because the liver will take this lipid-soluble bilirubin and convert it into water-soluble bilirubin. Why are you doing this? Because I want to give something water-soluble to the kidney. The kidney can deal with water-soluble stuff, and that's how it ends up in the urine. So the liver converts the unconjugated bilirubin into conjugated bilirubin via the process of conjugation, which is a subtype of metabolism. The key enzyme here is the famous uridine diphosphate glucuronidyl transferase. My goodness. Who makes the red blood cells? The bone marrow. Under the influence of EPO, which is made in the kidney. If I have a disease that decreases EPO, I can end up with anemia. Conversely, if I started with anemia and EPO is fine, the kidney is normal, as a response, as a negative feedback, the kidney will make more EPO to tell the bone marrow to make more red blood cells. This is the concept of red blood cell count. Hemoglobin concentration, just like any other concentration, is the amount over the volume. 
This is the concept of hematocrit or packed cell volume. Basically, if this is all of my blood, plasma and red blood cells, how much of this entire blood is red blood cells? Easy, 45 over 100 equals 45%. This is your hematocrit or packed cell volumes. What kind of cells? We are referring to the red blood cells because they are the most numerous. The buffy coat layer is almost nothing. Red blood cells started in the bone marrow as pluripotent stem cells, then myeloid stem cells, then pro-erythroblast, erythroblast, normal blast, reticulocyte. This is the baby red blood cell and this is the mature red blood cell. Red blood cells do not have a nucleus, they do not have mitochondria, they do not have ribosomes. No mitochondria, no TCA cycle, and no electron transport chain. That's why the only source of energy for the red blood cell is poor glycolysis, yielding only two ATPs. And that's why pyruvate kinase deficiency is a problem, because if you hit the red blood cell in glycolysis, that's the only thing she has, she will lose her source of ATP, resulting in hemolysis. Hemoglobin can carry four molecules of oxygen. Where is oxygen carried? Oxygen is carried here, on the heme, not on the globin. Which part of the heme? On the iron. What kind of iron? Ferrous or ferric? Ferrous, because Fe2 binds O2. This is the structure and types of hemoglobin. Here are the functions of hemoglobin. And here is why hemoglobinemia is ugly, because it can block the kidney. It also raises blood viscosity, which can raise blood pressure. It also increases the heart load. How does the mother and the baby talk to each other, chemically speaking, through the placenta? Here is the umbilical cord. Here is the placenta. This is the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve with regards to the shifters. Shift me to the right, shift me to the left. When you shift to the right, you are giving oxygen to tissue. But with left shift, the tissue is left behind with no oxygen. Oxygen is leaving the hemoglobin and going to tissue. Oxygen is binding to hemoglobin and leaving the tissue. Hemoglobin F is a left shifter. It increases oxygen binding, which means oxygen is going to remain on the hemoglobin. It's not going to go anywhere else. What's the favorite word for a baby? Mine. This is mine. You know why? Because he has hemoglobin F. What do you mean medicosis? Imagine that there is a lost oxygen molecule here in the placenta and it's weary and uncertain. Should I go to the mother or should I go to the baby? The baby has hemoglobin F. Mommy does not. Hemoglobin F is a left shifter. Oh, oxygen is gonna jump on that hemoglobin that has hemoglobin F because when you shift to the left, you increase binding. Oxygen is gonna go to the baby and leave mommy alone. And that's a good thing because the fetus does not have any lungs. The fetus is dependent on the oxygen that he gets from mommy. This is normal. This is pathology. In the arterial blood, hemoglobin is busy binding oxygen. In the venous blood, it's busy binding carbon dioxide. Tell me more, where is the oxygen binding on the hemoglobin? On the heme. Which part of the heme? The iron. What kind of iron? Ferrous iron. Fe2 binds O2. Each one molecule of hemoglobin binds four molecules of oxygen. Each one gram of hemoglobin binds 1.33 ml of oxygen. Please don't ever forget this number. We're gonna use it in respiratory physiology. Okay, medicosis, tell me about the carbon dioxide. Where is it on the hemoglobin? It's attached to the NH2 amino group. Where the flip is that? It's on the globin, not on the heme. Heme is for oxygen, globin is for carbon dioxide. This is normal. These two ugly diseases are abnormal. Now let's talk about EPO, iron, B12, and folate. Who makes blood cells? In adults, the bone marrow. How about in a fetus? Yolk sac, liver, spleen, bone marrow. Yolk sac, liver, spleen, then bone marrow, depending on the stage of embryogenesis. APO is made mainly in the kidney, but also partly in the liver. That's why if I have renal cell carcinoma or hepatocellular carcinoma, what's going to happen? I'm going to have tons of EPO causing lots of red blood cells, a condition known as polycythemia. The main function of the red blood cell is to get that oxygen from the lungs and give it to tissue. Moreover, when the tissue finishes metabolism, I'm gonna take that carbon dioxide and return it back to the lungs. Oxygen is on the heme, carbon dioxide is on the globin, of the hemoglobin. 
If I started with anemia, the kidney will get mad at me, will increase EPO secretion, causing lots of red blood cells, trying to counteract the anemia. It's a negative feedback. Can you give me examples? Sure. I started with hemorrhage, heart failure, iron deficiency, B12. All of this will decrease the delivery of oxygenated blood to the tissue. The kidney will get mad, increase EPO. I'll end up with increased production of red blood cells as much as I can. But what if I have hypoxia? Same thing, you are delivering less oxygen to the tissue. The kidney will get mad and the rest of the story. Give me examples of hypoxia, asthma, COPD, high altitude, athletes. That's why these people can have lots of red blood cells in the blood. If I showed you two patients, one lives at sea level, the other lives on top of a mountain. Can you tell me which is which? Sure, I can measure the red blood cells in their blood. The one with the higher red blood cell count is probably living at high altitudes, all things being equal. These are the stimulants of EPO production. Now let's talk about iron absorption. Except for menstruation, your body cannot get rid of iron. That's why you are vulnerable to iron overload. But everything is a trade-off. Too much iron, I get hemochromatosis, hemosiderosis, etc. Too little iron, I get iron deficiency anemia. Here is how you plan your day. First, you iron your clothes, then you fold them, and then you put them in the closet. Iron is absorbed first in the duodenum. Then folate is absorbed in the jejunum. Cobalamin, or B12, is absorbed in the terminal ileum. When you eat iron, it's mostly in the ferric form. How do I convert it from Fe3 to Fe2, which is gonna bind O2? You'll need HCl from the stomach, you need vitamin C. This is a reduction reaction. This is the story of iron absorption. Here is the Fenton reaction, F me. And here is the role of hepcidin and ferroportin. Again, all of this was discussed in detail in my hematology playlist. Too little iron, iron deficiency anemia. Too much iron, hemosiderosis and hemochromatosis, aka the bronze diabetes. Next is folate, absorbed in the jejunum, thanks to the enzyme conjugase. You eat green leafy vegetables, folate ends up in your blood, and then it starts as methyl THF. Dump that methyl group on B12, now THF is free. What's going to happen to B12? It's going to be methyl B12, because I accepted the methyl group from the folate. And then the B12 is mad. Hey, folate, I don't like this methyl group. Let me dump it. I'm going to dump it on homocysteine. Then homocysteine plus methyl is going to become methionine. Methionine will give you Uncle Sam, which is a methyl group donor. Basically, the methyl group is like a hot potato. Folate will dump it on the B12. B12 is going to dump it on homocysteine. Homocysteine is going to become methionine, which is going to give it to Sam, which is going to give the methyl group to any enzyme that needs methyl group for methylation. THF is now free. Methylene THF, dihydrofolate, and then dihydrofolate ductase. Basically, you keep cycling this way. Why do I keep cycling? Because if you go from here to here, at the same moment, DUMP is becoming DTMP, which is important for DNA synthesis. You cannot have cell division without DNA synthesis. Therefore, folate is important for cell division. And that's why if I have folate deficiency, I get what? Anemia, because my cells cannot divide. I have a low number of red blood cells. Here are some causes of folate deficiency. And now to B12. There is a beautiful video in my biochemistry playlist about folate, another video about B12. To have a robust level of B12 in your blood, you need food, salivary glands, healthy stomach, doozy pancreas, some bacteria in the intestine, ileum, and liver. If there is no B12, no one is going to accept the methyl from the folate. That's why B12 is important for cell replication. Causes of vitamin B12 deficiency, a problem in the diet, a problem in the salivary gland, a problem in the stomach, problems in the pancreas, problems with bacteria, problem in the ileum, problem in the liver. Anemia by definition is decreased red blood cell mass, which will decrease the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Whenever I have anemia, three things will happen. Low red blood cell count, low hemoglobin, and then low hematocrit. If you see these three, the patient has anemia. And then, what kind of anemia? Now, for this, you have to get the MCV. Low, normal, or high. This is small cell called microcytic, 
normocytic or big huge red blood cell called macrocytic anemia. Macrocytic anemia could be caused by folate and B12 deficiency, we call this megaloblastic, or it could be caused by others, we call this non-megaloblastic. The difference is this group has hypersegmented neutrophils, this group does not. Clinically speaking, anemia, tired and pale, pale and tired, sometimes I have angina, I can also get a murmur. Also, headache, dyspnea, dizziness, exercise intolerance, and the hyperdynamic circulation, which can cause high output cardiac failure, where everything is fast, everything is dilated, everything is distended, including the jugular veins. If a patient has B12 deficiency, if this patient takes lots of folate, you can mask the hematological symptoms of the deficiency, but you cannot mask the neurological symptoms of B12 deficiency. When red blood cell count is low, it's called anemia. When red blood cell count is high, it's called polycythemia, and it has many subtypes. We have talked about this before. We're done with hematology review. Let's review immunology. You have two types of immunity, innate and adaptive, non-specific, specific, does not learn, learns. No difference between first exposure and second exposure, big difference. The adaptive immunity could be naturally acquired or artificially acquired. Natural is either passive or active, artificial is the same. Natural does not involve the doctor, artificial involves the doctor. Artificial passive, the doctor gave you a serum that contains antibodies from someone else. Active artificial is vaccines. Early on, lymphocytes are naive. Later, they mature and they acquire memory. When did they mature? When they recognized the antigen. Blood is made of blood cells and plasma. Plasma is made of water and proteins. Proteins are either albumin or globulin. Globulins could be alpha-1 alpha-2, beta, or gamma globulins, such as antibodies or immunoglobulins. These are gamma globulins. IgM, IgA, IgG, IgE, IgD. Who made them? Plasma cells. Where did they come from? Mature B lymphocytes, which were naive in the beginning. When did they mature? When they recognized the antigen. Here are the five classes of antibodies and their functions. Who's the hero of opsonization? IgG. Who fixes and activates the complement? IgG and IgM. The first response is IgM. The second exposure is IgG. IgG is small, can easily cross the placenta. IgM is not. IgA ascends from blood to mucous surfaces. IgE, ew, allergy, parasites, anaphylactic shock, asthma, all of this is ew. The epic story of immunology. You are exposed to a foreign invader. You take a piece of that invader and then onto the antigen presenting cell. The antigen presenting cell is gonna present the antigen, the piece, to the lymphocytes. In the beginning, they were naive, but once they recognize the antigen, they mature and grow the French toast up. When they grow up, they can destroy the microbe, they can activate B lymphocytes to become plasma cells and secrete your antibodies, or they can become memory cell so that we can remember the exposure. If this happens again, the second response is going to be faster and stronger. In this analogy, the antigen presenting cell is the waiter presenting the food, antigen, to the diner, the lymphocyte. The diner can eat, remember the food, vomit some antibodies. Who's the antigen presenting cell? Could be a macrophage, a B lymphocyte, or a Langerhans cell. Dendritic cell, that is. Okay, what's the tray? MHC, major histocompatibility complex. Humoral immunity is B lymphocytes. You want to know why? Because the word humor means fluids, and they secrete antibodies into the fluids of your body, such as the plasma, such as the mucous membrane that lines your nose, your mouth, your anal cavity, vaginal canal, etc. Or could be cell-to-cell -cell destruction, cell-to-cell -cell talking. This is cellular immunity, thanks to the T lymphocytes, not the B. T lymphocytes are either T helper or T cytotoxic or T suppressor. T helper helps others. I can help my sisters. I can help my neighbors. Tell me, how did you help your sister? Cytokines. I help the cytotoxic. It's cytotoxic. It kills stuff. It kills cancers. It kills viruses and virus infected cells. I also help the other sister, the T suppressor or the T regulatory cells, so that I do not kill my own cells. I only want to kill invaders, not the self. I can also help my neighbors mature and secrete 
antibodies or become memory B cells. The heptin is a baby antigen. An antigen is anything that generates an antibody. It generates a response from you. Then you need to up the ante. Here is the structure of the antibody or the immunoglobulin. The antigen or the epitope is going to bind here. The complement is going to bind here. The cell is going to bind here. The cell could be macrophage, any of the antigen presenting cells, lymphocyte, etc. Here's the invader. Take a piece called antigen. Antigen antibody complex. Who's here? A cell such as the antigen presenting cell at the constant site, not at the variable site. Macrophage gets mad and it's gonna kill stuff. I'm gonna kill the antibody. I'm even gonna consume the entire antigen antibody complex. B lymphocytes versus T lymphocytes. B cell immunity versus T cell immunity. Tell me about the tray. I wanna be a tracer. I'm already a tracer. We have two types of MHC, class one and class two. MHC is almost equivalent to human leukocytic antigen. Class 1 and class 2. Class 1 is HLA, A, B, and C. Class 2 is the Ds. In order to be a police officer, you need to graduate from a police academy, and then you work as an officer, and you are located in the police station. Well, who's the police academy? Well, if you are a B lymphocyte, it's the bone marrow. If you're a T lymphocyte, it's the thymus. Police officers are the lymphocytes and other white blood cells. The police stations are lymph nodes, spleen, mucosa, associated lymphatic tissue, and tonsils, and others. Here is the structure of the lymph node. The cortex of the lymph node contains B lymphocytes. The paracortex contains T lymphocytes. The middlary cords contain plasma cells. The middlary sinus contains macrophages. Cortex with the follicle, paracortex, middle, middlary sinus. B lymphocyte, T lymphocyte, plasma cells, macrophages. This is the structure of the spleen. The spleen has red pulp and white pulp. Red pulp is just blood. White pulp has cells such as B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. B lymphocytes are always in the follicle. Whether you're talking about a lymph node or a spleen, the B is always in the follicle. The T lymphocytes are always in the P. In the lymph node, they were in the paracortex, but in the spleen, they are in the periarterial lymphatic sheath. The T is always in the P. I just remember this crazy mnemonic. Here are the causes of a big lymph node. The innate immunity is non-specific. It is very fast. Who is the bridge between innate immunity and adaptive immunity? The complement. What's the function of having antigen antibody complex? Neutralization of the stupid bacteria, opsonization, agglutination, activation, activation, activation of natural killer cells, and activation of the complement, which ends up with the MAC, which will attack. How do immune cells communicate with one another? Cytokines, which include interleukins, which is the internet of the leukocytes. Ends in IN because it's a protein. The fetus is foreign to mommy, different immune systems. Why doesn't mommy destroy the baby? Because mommy is immunocompromised during pregnancy. That's why we do not give mommy live attenuated vaccines, because they are too much to bear. How does your immune system tell the difference between the self and the foreigner? There are many mechanisms by which the immune system avoids attacking your own cells, including colonial energy, colonial deletion, and T regulatory cell. Autoimmune diseases is when you cannot recognize the cell, therefore you will attack yourself, such as these diseases. T cell activation is here, B cell activation is here. Class switching is when they switch from being naive into being mature, from IgM, IgD, MD like a doctor, into someone who can secrete everything. A snake oil salesman. Pause and review. Three types of prevention. Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. The basic idea is that my CD4 is toast. You have to match before you give organ to someone, before performing organ transplant. Match the ABO, match the RH, match the MHC. If you match right, it's very unlikely that you will get one of these transfusion reactions. The complement system. Why call it complement? Because it complements the function of the antibodies. Just like fibrinogen became active by proteolysis or cleavage thanks to prothrombin, 
Similarly, complement proteins become active via destruction. This is creative destruction. Who activated them? One of three triggers. Could be an antigen antibody complex. We call this classical pathway. The trigger could be bacterial endotoxin or properdin, an alternative pathway. Or could be menin binding lectin or mannose binding lectin. That's the lectin pathway. Primary exposure is usually alternative and or lectin. Second exposure is the classical because the antigen antibody complex is usually not available with the first exposure. Alternative pathway. Is it necessarily bacteria? No, it could be bacteria, could be fungus, could be virus. Any of these can trigger the alternative pathway. Regardless of who pulls the trigger, the end result is formation of the MAC, which will attack. Here is the classical pathway. We start here, we end up with the MAC, which is C5B, C6, C7, C8, C9. Together they are called the terminal complement or membrane attack complex, the MAC, which will attack. Who's my sweet middleman, C3B? Very important. It's important because it activates the MAC. It's also important for opsonization. Make those bacteria tasty for phagocytes. Here is the lectin pathway, very similar to the classical complement pathway. It's just that the beginning is kind of different. But alternative is very strange. The beginning is different. Don't forget properdin. C3 convertase converts C3 into C3A and C3B. C3B with others will make the C5 convertase, which will convert C5 into C5A and C5B. A is for anaphylaxis, but B will continue to be inside the complement and to push it forwards until you end up with the MAC, which will attack. Pause and review. Here are the three complement pathways in one beautiful slide. Complement requires regulation and therefore it can have pathology. Early complement deficiency, you get ENT and lung infections. Late complement deficiency, you get Neisseria infections. You test for classical complement pathway by starting with CH50. You test for alternative pathway by starting with AB50. Hypersensitivity reactions are four. This is the fastest, this is the slowest. Psi2 toxic, we have antigen antibody complex on the top of the cell. Type 3, free antigen antibody complex, freely floating in the plasma. Here are the four types. Here is type 1, remember A, asthma, A, atopy, B, sting. Here is type 2, hypersensitivity, complement or no complement, complement. This is the story of rheumatic fever, anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody, hyperacute transplant rejection. No complement, this is the story of autoimmune hemolytic anemia, autoimmune thrombocytopenia, hemolytic disease of the newborn, myasthenia, and Graves' disease. Type 3 hypersensitivity reaction is the story of fibrinoid necrosis, immune complex mediated vasculitis, nephritis, arthritis, seen in lupus, and rheumatoid arthritis. Or it could be serum sickness reaction or arthritis reaction. Serum sickness is generalized. Arthritis is localized. Serum sickness is acute. Arthritis is subacute and subcutaneous or intradermal to be specific. Type 4. It's not humoral. It's not mediated by antibodies. It's mediated by the T lymphocytes. T lymphocytes. Tuberculin test for tuberculosis. Transplant rejection. Touching graft versus host disease. This is how you kill. This is how you make a granuloma. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.